Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to give you five important reasons why you need to join a men's Bible study group. The first reason is because Proverbs 27 verse 17 says, Iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. You know, we are in this world, but we're not part of this world. And so even though there's a lot of darkness in this world, the best friends that you can make are those who take the relationship with God seriously. Godly men who you can trust with your life. Men who inspire you and motivate you to become better. Men who are there to be a friend who listens when things are tough and a brother who holds you accountable for when you act up or make mistakes. A Bible study group for men is an ideal place where you can meet other brothers in Christ, men who are serious with God. That is the place where you can also meet a good friend, maybe even a best friend, someone that you can call a brother, a brother for life that will help you to walk this temporary world that's full of darkness, but to walk it the right way with Christ as your focus point. Is it not interesting that when Jesus sent out the disciples, he sent them out two by two. Read it with me. Luke 10 verse 1. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. You know, I personally have a handful of men that I trust fully, that I can go to and ask for advice. Godly men that I know are serious with God. And when I ask them to pray for me or talk about certain issues, then I know they really care about me and have the best of intentions for me. And they will go to God and pray with me and for me, even when I'm not talking to them. If you don't have men like that, in your life, brothers, then pray to God. Ask Him to send you men that you can trust, that you can build a strong relationship with moving forward until the day you die. And then start joining a men's Bible study group this week if you can. The second reason is God wants us to have fellowship with other believers. You know, I've heard some men say, well, I don't want to go to church because church is just full of fake people. Well, first of all, the church is not a place for people who are perfect. You will find sinners there because all of us are sinners. It is a place for broken people who know they need God desperately. People like you and me, we all have that sinful nature in us and we will have it until the day we die. No one is perfect. And so when you go to church, don't expect to find perfect people. You will find unbelievers there. You'll also find people who are new Christians, babies in Christ. And then you will also find other people who are mature Christians. And even they still make mistakes because all of us still have that sinful fleshly nature in us. We go to church for different reasons. And so the first thing is we go to church for God, to learn, to grow together. That's why we go. So instead of judging other people, look at the log in your own eye first before you judge other people because Christ came for sinners, not for those people who think they're perfect. The second reason you go to church is not just so that you can get fed the whole time with spiritual milk so that you can just grow and grow and grow and you're just sitting there and becoming fat, spiritually fat. No, it's also there, the church, because you need to go and help people. You need to contribute. It's not just about you. And third, the church is not the building. The church is where brothers and sisters come together in Christ to worship God. That's a church. So that means a Bible study group is also the church of God. And then four. God tells us to go to church. It is not something that we can decide. It is what Scripture says. So you need to decide. Do you want to listen to your fleshly sinful nature that tells you, I don't want to go to church? Or to God that says, go. Hebrews 10 verse 24. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, 
not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. The third reason why I need to go to a men's Bible study is because men are different, right? We, women are different. Men talk about different things. And there are things that you need to hear from other men that's grounded in Scripture, like how to be a good father, how to be a good husband, how to be a good man according to the Bible. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13 says, Be watchful, stand firm in the faith, Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. You know, men can be very childish. I'm talking about men who are not reborn Christians. Their way of thinking is still worldly, you know, especially if you have a group of men and their egos and they just puffed up and you, you see, ugh. ugh. But what you learn when you join a men's Bible study is to change your way of thinking, living, and acting according to God's Word. And so you leave those childish things behind. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11, When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. You know, there's something beautiful and special about men coming together to pray together, read Scripture together, and worship God. You know, it is... It, I keep on thinking about certain men like David. You know, men who are there who say, Here I am, Lord. Change me. Take out everything that is not right. Men who are serious with God. When they come together and they pray for each other, they worship God. That is special. And if you join a group like that, you will become a stronger man and grow in Christ. You'll become a mature man, mature reborn Christian. The fourth reason is you can learn from good role models. There are many older men that I grew to respect and admire. Men who are spiritually mature and who already walked the life I now walk, carrying with them an immense amount of experience that I learn from. So this is where you get mentors role models that you can learn from. And we need to learn from these kind of people that already walked most of the path, the journey of sanctification that you are walking on now and still going to walk on. They went through many challenges. <laughs> They're almost done with their journey. The next step for them is almost heaven. These are people who are over 60, 70, 80 years old. So they completed most of their race already, victoriously, learning how to overcome challenges through biblical principles, values, and also commands, things that we have to do. So they learn not just to be hearers of the word, but to be doers. And we also need to learn from their mistakes, just like we can learn from the mistakes of the nation of Israel. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 6. Now these things took place as examples for us that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did. And 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents. Nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now listen to this, verse 11. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. The fifth reason is identity, purpose, and growth. You will grow spiritually a lot faster in a men's Bible study compared to being alone. Through this time, you will also feel like you're part of God's family. You have purpose and you also find your identity as a man in Christ. Ephesians 2 verse 10, For we are His worksmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk 
in them. Now, if you're still looking for a men's Bible study group, remember you can also create your own, right? And if you're already in a men's Bible study group and you're looking for a devotional, something to work through, a study guide, then get Bold Pursuit, a 90-day devotional for men seeking the heart of God. I wrote this specifically for men. I'll add all the details for you in the video description down below with also the study group questions. You can also get it on my website, dlmchristianlifestyle.com or boldpursuitbook.com. Now, just so you know what this book is all about, I wrote this book for men to bring them back to Scripture so that they can become true men of God and pursue God with everything in them. Let me read some of the back cover here for you. You could pursue a lot of things in life, money, relationships, power, but only one pursuit brings satisfaction on earth because only one pursuit matters for eternity. Becoming a true man of God. I think about men like David, you know, who took their relationship with God seriously. Who prayed and said, God, search my heart and take out everything that is not right. And God looked at David and he called David a man after my own heart. You know, we can have that same relationship with God today. The action oriented teachings in Bold Pursuit will challenge and equip you to pursue God above all else in your daily life. As you dig deep into God's Word, you'll experience the fulfillment of making your relationship with Jesus your greatest priority. Through each day's straightforward devotional reading, packed with powerful biblical insights, you'll explore how to worship God in spirit and in truth what it means to engage in spiritual battle, what sin is and isn't, and why it matters, where to find hope when you're feeling hopeless, practical ways to overcome destructive habits and addictions, and how to make Bible study and prayer an integrated part of your life. Each daily reading in Bold Pursuit combines a Bible passage with a short devotional that speaks to the real issues men face at work and home. Prayer prompts, reflection questions, and action items bring focus to each day. In an age of distraction and busyness, every man's true calling remains the same. To walk with the God who created you for great things and find the meaning and purpose your soul craves. I talk a lot in this book about the difference between acting, living in, the spirit and not in the flesh and what it means to truly come to that place where you fully surrender to Christ. You know, Jesus asked Peter in John 21 verse 15, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? In verse 16, he said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? In verse 17, he said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? You know, you've probably heard this a lot by now, that God is love and He loves you. And He does. It's true. But do you love Him? Do you love Jesus with everything that is in you? This book lets you focus on the right things, your relationship with Jesus. And so check it out when you have some time. And if you are serious about your relationship with God, watch these videos here. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you there. And always remember, life is short, so don't waste yours.